Welcome to Make It a Murderer Rubber Ducky YouTube channel. A Forensic Nightmare CX and A23 presented by Dr. Silkman. Welcome everyone to today's presentation. My name is Dr. Silkman. Today's presentation is entitled A Forensic Analysis Nightmare Item CX and A23 and specifically in today's presentation I'd like to cover the following topics Whose fresh blood was found at the quarry near the Avery Salvage Yard? Whose blood was on the rare cargo door handle of Teresa's Toyota RAV4. What did the forensic DNA analysis of item CX and A23 reveal? And finally, whose fingerprints were on the rare cargo door handle of Teresa's Toyota RAV4? And I found a quote, and keep this in mind because it's going to be very pertinent in today's discussion. I quote, this is from Attorney Buting, you cannot open this vehicle without touching that latch. And here is the latch region shown on the RAV4. Okay, it really started with a tweet from Kathleen Zellner in 2018. And as you know, Kathleen is representing Stephen. And I'll read the quote out. CX and A23, both of which exclude Stephen Avery, but otherwise, unless we discover new DNA of Miss Holbach and or another killer, the DNA that has been developed is of limited use. It does not, however, implicate Stephen. So let's address this. And let's first examine item CX. It really started on November the 10th, 2005. And this is a CASA report written by Sergeant Bill Tyson. And you can see the page number here if you wish to go to the original report. And I want to summarize the major findings that were found. A charred human foot in the quarry south of Avery Road, a human vertebrae in the water, something that resembled a human foot that was charred, and you can see that something must have been going on at the quarry, because look at who was present at the quarry looking at these uh, items. Special Agent Fassbender, Investigator Wiegert, Sheriff Pagel, Medical Examiner Claser, and Correctional Officer Conan. But this really struck out, the next points really struck out as being very important. First of all, they found a rag with brownish red colored stain on it, fresh blood in the gravel, and Sergeant Bill Tyson made the following comment. He stated, very odd that this could possibly be blood from the case. Now remember, the investigation hadn't even started and he had made this comment about the fresh blood that he saw at the quarry. However, he also did state, I did wish to collect the blood for evidentiary purposes. All right, now you can see that the uh, blood was collected and written up in a ledger and it was given property tag 8008 and I'd just like to point out that property tag 8008 in actual fact is item CX. All right so let's start with exhibit 313 and item CX. Now I'd just like to point out that all the PCRs were done by Cherie Colhane. Now we can see here in her report, item CX is the question stain reportedly recovered from quarry 
south of Avery Road and given the tag number 8008. Chemical tests were done and shown that item CX indeed had blood present. And genomic DNA was extracted and a full human male genomic DNA profile was obtained as we can see here. Now we know that it's from a male because we can see that it contains an X and Y chromosome and all the alleles were um, reported. There were no missing alleles on this particular sample item CX. Okay, now that we have item CX, we can actually compare it to all the males that had a genomic DNA profile done. We can compare item CX with Stephen Avery, Brian Dassey, Alan Avery, Brendan Dassey, Bobby Dassey, Earl Avery and Charles Avery. And if we look at all the alleles from these men, we find that there is no match, there is no 15 out of 15 match with item CX. So we can exclude Stephen Avery, Alan Avery, Earl Avery, Charles Avery, Brian Dassey, Brendan Dassey, Bobby Dassey. Now this raises a couple of very interesting questions. One of them is, which additional potential males, of course, persons of interest, should have also been compared with item CX? Was the genomic DNA profile of item CX run through the FBI CODIS DNA database? I can't find any evidence that it was. We summarize with the following, and that is the male individual who left the fresh blood in the quarry south of Avery Road remains unknown. Now, why is this interesting? Zellner had a look at the geolocation of item CX. And from looking at one of Zellner's fold motion, we can see the geolocation of where item CX was found. Uh, and if you read her fold motion, this particular area was also bisected by the scent dogs. So they obviously had detected the fresh blood and alerted to the presence of this blood in the quarry. But you'll see that where item CX is, it's off the Stephen Avery salvage yard. Now, this is important because now we can list the major findings from this case. And that is, we can have a look at Stephen Avery's burn pit shown here. And we know that that particular location, uh, Dr. Bennett had found an adult human female ileum bone, which is part of the pelvis. There were also other human cremains found in the burn pit. We also have the yonder burn barrel number two, and that also contained human cremains. And finally, we know that in the Manitowoc County gravel pit, for example, quarry pole number one, we had the, the presence of the pelvic bone fragments that had cut marks, and that Dr. Eisenberg suspected that they were suspect human. But the other important thing is that other human cremains were found here as well. There were two additional uh, bone poles found at the Manitowoc County gravel pit. And also there was another bone pole found in the quarry. So one can see that the human cremains were spread over a large location. So why is item CX so important? Well, Kathleen Zona believes that part of the major crime took place in the gravel pit, and I'll read it. Other incriminating evidence linking the Manitowoc County gravel pit to the crime scene. In addition to the human bone fragments found in the gravel pit, 
there is an abundance of old and new evidence establishing that the crime scene was in the gravel pit and not at Mr. Avery's residence and garage. Miss Hawbuck's body was put in the Dassey Yonder burn barrel and transported to the gravel pit after sunset. The body was burned in the burn barrel and the odour was detected by Travis Growell on CTHQ. The scent and cadaver dogs reports corroborate that Miss Hallbuck and her vehicle were in the gravel pit. Specifically, the cadaver dogs hit on two burn piles in an area of large concrete slabs in the gravel pit. Blood from an unknown male was found on a rock in the vicinity of the gravel pit bone piles and excluded Mr. Avery. And this is laboratory item CX. All right, so witness testimony has also linked the gravel pit to the crime scene. The edited flyover video shows no tire tracks on November the 4th, 2005, leading to where the RAV4 was found. But tire tracks leading to the RAV4 were present on November the 5th, 2005, strongly suggesting that the vehicle was driven from the gravel pit into the Avery property and planted. So clearly you can see that Zelna has put the major crime scene occurring in the gravel pit. Okay, let's now examine item A23. So let's have a look at Teresa Horbuck's Toyota RAV4 and the cargo door handle. And attorney Fallon in the Brenda Dassey trial stated the following. Teresa Horbuck's body was loaded into the rear of an SUV after she was shot. How do we know that? The defendant told us they did that. Well, we have Cherie Cohane and Nick Stalke to tell us about that. So we're talking about this particular door handle. If you're going to place a body inside the back of the RAV4, it's obvious that you need to open the back door to place the body inside the um, RAV4. And indeed, when forensic analysis was done, and we're looking now at Teresa's RAV4, the cargo area, one can clearly see the presence of blood. And Mr. Stalke in Brendan Dassey's trial stated that that impression was due to bloody hair that has come in contact with that surface. Okay, so let's have a look specifically at item A23. This is Cherie Cohen, and she was questioned about this in the Brendan Dassey trial. Question, and do you recall whether there were swabs of the cargo door handle? Answer, the back, the very back. There was a, I did take a swab of, um, and I believe it was my item A23, because um, I did, analysis was processing that area and saw something, and I did swab that area, and I did extract it. Okay, you, you did extract the sample, answer, Yes. So we're talking about a blood stain being present on the back of the RAV4 on the door handle. Now, this raises a very interesting question, of course, and that is whose blood that was given item A23 was on the cargo door handle of the RAV4? And if you remember, the state attests that Stephen Avery was actively bleeding. And the other question we can ask is, well, what about fingerprints? So if you blow up 
this area of the RAV4, you can clearly see almost the outline of a handprint and what looks like a red substance. And the question is, is that material blood? And quite clearly, if you're going to open the door, you've got no choice but to place your hand on the door handle to open up the back of the RAV4. Okay, so let's have a look at the fingerprints that were on the back of Teresa Hallbach's Toyota RAV4. And Mr. Riddle was questioned about this at the Stephen Avery trial. He's the fingerprint expert. Question. Okay, but you found one right where we saw on the earlier close-up, one right next to where the key goes in for the cargo gate. Answer. That's correct. And then three along this pillar to the left side that goes above the tail light assembly. Answer, that's correct. And then a fifth one was over on the other side, sort of in the shadows, uh, on the other side of the wheel cover. That's correct. So we're talking about the presence of fingerprints on the back of the RAV4. And of course, one wants to know who do these fingerprints belong to? Do they belong to Stephen Avery, Brendan Dassey, or who? Well, the fingerprints were compared. Question. And you compared those fingerprints to the fingerprint standard of Mr. Stephen Avery? Answer. Yes, I did. Question. And they did not match, correct? Answer. No. They did not. That's correct. So therefore, none of the fingerprints, especially those that were present on the door handle, they didn't belong to Stephen Avery. Now, some of you who are quite observant will say, yeah, but what about on the wheel cover? And you can clearly see there are fingerprints on the wheel cover. Unfortunately, they were uninformative. In other words, there wasn't any markings on the fingerprints that could give any information. So even though there are fingerprints, uh, if you don't have the wells and swells left over uh, on the fingerprint image, they'll provide you with no information at all. All right, now one can see here the report, uh, Exhibit 498, uh, done by Mr. Riddle. And what he did was he used or looked at specific items for the fingerprints. And one of the items, known as item A, was the actual Toyota RAV4 itself. So that had fingerprints on it. And he compared the fingerprints uh, to Stephen Avery as well as other individuals. And what he found was there was no identifications were affected. In other words, none of those individuals, including Stephen Avery, none of them had left their fingerprints, for example, on the Toyota RAV4. And as one can see, uh, the Toyota RAV4 was extensively dusted with fingerprint powder everywhere. They were obviously looking for any type of prints that were left on the RAV4, none of which matched Stephen Avery. Alright, now let's go back to item A23. And if we have a look at Exhibit 311, again, the analysis was Cherie Cohen. And we can see here uh, in this report, in Exhibit 311, the mentioning of item A23. And I quote, swabbing from the rare exterior door handle of cargo door. And one can clearly see that there was blood present in item A23. But wait a minute, what about the extraction of genomic DNA? There is no mentioning of the extraction of genomic DNA from item 23, A23, anywhere in the report. 
So this was extremely puzzling. So what I did is I went back and I reread all of the DNA forensic reports. To my surprise, I found it. But it was present in Exhibit 313. Again, Cherie Cohane was the DNA analysis of this sample. And I was stunned with what I read in this report. Tucked in the discussion section was this. Partial DNA profiles were obtained from items A23 and DD1. Note the following. Due to the limited genetic information, these profiles are insufficient for interpretation. Now, let's examine that for a moment. We have got blood from someone on the door handle of Teresa's Toyota RAV4. And we have an attempt at a DNA extraction, but unfortunately, it only gave back a partial DNA profile. Okay, let's continue. So, Cherie Cohen was questioned about this uh, in the Brendan Dassey trial. Question. And that was human or non-human blood? Answer. It was positive uh, for blood because the presumptive test was positive, but it was inconclusive because I didn't, the profile was too partial, I could not uh, make any kind of conclusion so that it was inconclusive. Question. So you were unable then to then go further and determine if that had any sort of a DNA profile, whether it be a partial profile or a full pro profile? Answer. Note the following. I did get a partial profile, but it was inconclusive because uh, sometimes if a partial profile only shows up one or two uh, types, then we usually report that as inconclusive because that's not really enough genetic information um, to report that. So in this case, um, it was inconclusive. Question. So on direct, for example, you had been asked by Attorney Garn about partial profiling. Yes. Or a partial profile, excuse me. Yes. And um, for instance, I believe it was one where there were seven characteristics. Yes. Of 15, is that right? Yes. And you were able to come up with a partial profile. But here, you're saying it was probably more like three characteristics? Yes, right. So because it was so little, you weren't able to come up with something that you can even give a partial profile to? Correct. So we're talking about a fingerprint in a very damning location right on the door handle and also the presence of blood. Cherie Cohen was only able to establish a partial DNA profile. But wait, there's more. So Cherie Cohen was questioned about this further in the Stephen Avery trial. And the point I want to make here is that any researchers out there who are trying to follow, especially the forensic evidence. You have to go through the pre-trial, the DASI trial, and also the Stephen Avery trial and the CASA reports in order to follow the information. It's not all in one place. But let's examine what Cherie said. It's very, very interesting. Question. And if I zoom in on this little bit, does this depict the door handle for the tailgate or whatever you want to call it, the rear door? Yes. Cargo door. That's the area that Mr. Riddle was working on for fingerprints, correct? I believe so, yes. And that's the area where he said, hey, maybe there's something here. Maybe you want to take a look at that. Yes. That's the item then that became A23. Yes, and you tested that with a swab for DNA, right? Yes. Look at the following question. 
and you did not find Mr. Avery's DNA on that swab, did you? No. And so, if Mr. Kratz, in his opening statement, told this jury with a PowerPoint slide right up here showing that with the circle around that red door and said that, that would there would be evidence that Mr. Avery's DNA was on that door handle, that would be wrong, wouldn't it? Have a look at Cherie's response. Based on my results, I didn't find Stephen Avery's DNA on that sample. Question. In fact, you found Mr. Avery's DNA nowhere on the rear of that vehicle at all, correct? Correct. Even more so, you never found Mr. Avery's DNA anywhere around the outside of any of the door handles of that vehicle, did you? Answer, no, but, but I, I didn't test any of the exterior doors. Question, and you later received some swabs of the interior door handles, didn't you? Yes, and you did not find Mr. Avery's DNA on that, did you? No. So here's a picture of Stephen Avery's wound. Uh, that was a photograph taken um, several days after uh, Halloween. And you can clearly see that the wound has healed over. But this is very, very interesting because there was no fingerprint nor DNA evidence that suggested that Stephen Avery or Brendan Dassey, because remember, they had Brendan's DNA profile as well, had touched the back of Teresa Hallbach's a Toyota RAV4. So, we can now summarize and ask a couple of critical questions about item CX and A23. First of all, item CX, which was the fresh blood found at the quarry, did not match the genomic DNA profiles of Stephen Avery, his brothers and father, Brendan, Brian and Bobby Dassey, and no other male persons of interest were compared to item CX. Clearly, further investigations need to be done with item CX in order to determine whose blood it belongs to. And I want to ask this question. Has the genomic DNA profile obtained from item CX been run through the FBI CODIS DNA database? I can't find any evidence that it has. Let's have a look at item A23. Only a partial DNA profile was obtained from item A23. And this was blood found on the rear cargo door handle of the RAV4. So, despite the presence of blood on the rear cargo door handle of Teresa Hallbuck's Toyota RAV4, the partial DNA profile from item A23 had excluded Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey. That is a significant finding because the state attested that Stephen Avery was actively bleeding. So if he's actively bleeding and he placed Teresa Hallbach in the back of her own Toyota RAV4 and there is blood on the door handle, how come the DNA from that blood does not match Stephen nor Brendan? So here's the bizarre thing. And I think it really says a lot. Why didn't Cherie Colhain simply re-extract item A23 to obtain a full genomic DNA profile? Is it possible that all the sample was used up? I highly doubt it. Because if you've got blood present, there's an ample amount of white blood cells present in that blood sample to do multiple DNA extractions. She should have been able to simply re-extract the DNA and do another PCR. It's a day's job, maximum. So 
what does the state actually know about item A23 if Cherie Cohane was able to exclude Stephen Avery? So in other words, what that means is there's enough genetic information in the partial profile to say, nope, Stephen Avery does not match any of the alleles that have come up. And it begs the question, and I have to ask it, was that DNA, was that blood from a male or a female? We don't know. So here's the relevant question. How does the state explain why none of Stephen Avery's blood in the form of DNA nor fingerprints were found on the outside of the RAF4, yet his blood as DNA was found on the inside of the RAF4? And here's the pertinent question. How did Stephen Avery enter the RAF4? Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, well, he just used his left hand. Well, if he used his left hand, it meant that he was conscious about not leaving his blood anywhere near the RAV4. So if he was conscious enough to use his left hand to get in and out of the RAV4, then why is he leaving his blood in the RAV4? It defeats the purpose. And the other thing, of course, is no one had noted the presence of any blood around the RAV4 where it was found on the Avery salvage yard. The only blood of Stephen Avery appears to be on the inside of the RAV4. Okay, so the state attests that Stephen Avery was actively bleeding. However, what proof did the state have that this was the case on the 31st of October 2005. I believe that they are speculating that he was actively bleeding on that date. They don't have any proof. Now, Attorney Buting summed it up really, really well. And this is my last slide. I quote, Besides, we know that there are eight unidentified fingerprints at this moment that were found on that vehicle, including some very incriminating locations. I went through it with Mr. Riddle. Right on the back rear cargo door of the RAV4, which of course I don't have, right, where you'd expect. If somebody is opening that door to put a body in, they're going to find your fingerprints if you're not wearing gloves. And if you're bleeding, you're not wearing gloves. You can't be. You can't have it both ways. So what we have, as shown here in this red circle, in red square, we have fingerprints, we have blood, neither of which point to Stephen Avery nor Brendan Dassey. Guys, I'd like to thank you for listening to my presentation. Uh, in this presentation, I use the following references, which of course you can go to, uh, to read uh, and investigate further. And as usual, I'd like to thank Rubber Ducky and her fellow duckies for constant inspiration and some fantastic discussions. See you all soon on my next presentation. And please uh, leave your comments down below and I'll try and answer them as soon as I can. Thank you very much for all your support and positivity. Thank you.